After a long time away, it is time for a new What Sold This Week video, possibly featuring many cats and dogs. Not that they sold, just that they're in the office with me. So, this week. Starting off, we have some makeup stuff, Paracone MD. I believe I got this um, in the clearance section at a TJ Maxx. I don't remember what I paid. It was less than what I sold it for. Sometimes I pick up stuff at TJ Maxx in the health and beauty clearance section. It's not the most lucrative thing in the world, but it can work. Next we have a digital compact camera. Um, this one I believe I purchased as not working, but I got some batteries in it and poked around and got it working and it sold pretty quickly for $38. And this is quite an old camera, by the way. It's only four megapixels. Next, this is part of a lot of these leather university cigarette flag pennant things that I bought, I don't know, a year and a half ago. So I got a lot of these, uh, probably over a hundred of them in a Ziploc bag. Um, and I did pay about a hundred dollars for them, but they have been, since I listed them, whenever that was, they've been selling fairly steadily for between six and $18 a piece. Um, this one is in extremely bad shape, hence the low price. Oh, there's a kitty. They were freebies that came in cigarettes in around 1910. And the ones I bought all have universities on them. So those are very collectible still. And they come in these triangle pennant shapes in a bunch of different designs. And also I uh, have some that are more rectangle shape. And if you've ever seen tobacco silks, um, those like printed silky rectangles also came in cigarettes. And there are also little carpets, <laughs> little felt rectangles that came in cigarettes. This is the same sort of thing. So although when I bought it, I was kind of miffed that the estate sale was charging so much, it actually turned out to be a really good investment. A lot of them have sold for, you know, 10 to 20 bucks. So there we go. This is more health and beauty. I got this at a consignment shop for a few bucks and just, you know, trying some new things. We have a postcard. No idea where I got this. I've had it for a long time. This is part of a liquidation sale that I have been running on a lot of ephemera and this sold for $6.24 to someone in Canada. Here's another postcard. This one I got at a like a vintage market in Boston a few years ago. I got a bunch of these big letter um, town name things, mostly California, mostly military. And this again is part of my sale. It sold for about half price at $8.75. Here's an advertising pen. Again, this is on sale for half price. And actually this isn't a pen, it's a mechanical pencil. Uh, this kind of um, hexagonal or octagonal kind of these um, mechanical pencils, I bought a huge bag of at some point, all different places. They've been slowly selling and putting them on sale has definitely helped. This is a trade card. It's for buttering, but it's kind of, you know, dairy related. It's actually gold, very pretty. And this again was sold on 50% off sale. Something I've had for a bazillion years. Here we go, um, some more postcards. There's actually three of these that someone bought. Um, they're like artist postcards. So there's this one and this one and this one. The artist name is Winold Reese. Somebody bought three of these. I have a few more. Again, these were on 50% off sale. It's a great way to uh, move some ephemera. And I, I'm going to talk about that stuff, business models and sales and all these things um, more in another video coming up soon. 
here are some buttons. These are the Red Cross buttons. They are from World War II, a woman's uniform. They are not in the best condition, but they are match set, which is nice. I got these at an estate sale in a box of Red Cross buttons, a bunch of different kinds that I paid $45 for. I've sold probably at least 10 different lots out of that box and I have a few more left so definitely well in the profit area <laughs> on the Red Cross buttons. This is a Polish grammar book like an elementary school book from 1914. It's obviously in rather rough shape. <laughs> rather rough. I love the rather rough picture Annie. And this I got at, it's kind of cool though, look at that at another estate sale at which I bought a ton of um, sort of turn of the century Polish literature that was printed in America. I just got a ton of stuff and a lot of it's sold. It's not the fastest thing ever, but they're kind of cool, different kinds of publications and they are, you know, slowly moving out of here. This one, I forget what the offer was, like $10 or something. Valentine's have been selling well the past few weeks. This uh, was part of my liquidation sale. I've had these Valentines for a long time and I'm kind of sick of it so I've been just trying to get them sold and they came from most of the ones I have and I do I have I don't know a couple hundred maybe from another estate sale several years ago and they were mostly actually in a, an album in the attic in rough shape and I did remove them. They were taped in with like decaying tape. So you can see there's some tape on here and they're written on, but they've still slowly sold because they're cute and they're from, you know, the this one's probably from the 30s or 40s, but I, some of them are older and some of them are a little newer. So they have a real like kitsch or nostalgia factor in there. They, you know, topics people like, like different animals and all kinds of cute stuff. So those have been selling a bit for Valentine's Day this year. Um, here's another postcard. And this is, again, was 50% off and proof that Chrome postcards do sell. And even if they're like really bad color and don't look that exciting, it's the topic. This is Magic Mountain in Valencia, California. Sold for $6.48. This is a little poster advertising piece for what was a fairly local to me bakery at some point, closed, you know, decades ago. And it's kind of a cool piece. Um, well, I, I mean, I really like this graphic. It's very bold, <laughs> even though it's just, you know, the initial for the company's name. And the back has um, a meal planning chart on it. It's, it's like 11 by 7 little poster. So that was cool. I've actually found things from this bakery at a few different estate sales, and they have sold well. I don't personally remember it, but apparently people do with fondness. Here are two old flip phones, um, both Verizon ones, and they sold on an offer for $11.81. I'm sure I picked these up at an estate sale sometime. Whenever I see them at estate sales, I just throw them in my pile. So, you know, they're essentially pennies or whatever. I usually buy a lot of stuff at once. So it's not like I'm even paying a dollar for these. And sometimes they sit depending on the model, but these, you know, eventually sold for 10 bucks. That's fine onward another valentine this one is larger and it's kind of cool in that it has like 3d section the doctor stethoscope is got real rope and again you can see the tape damage it's uh got some stuff on the back but although i find it a bit creepy in fact the child doctor um you know i guess it's cute <laughs> so there you go <laughs> health and beauty I also got this at TJ Maxx and looked it up and it was, I think, like not available maybe because it wasn't Christmas or maybe because it's last year's model or I don't remember, but this 
sold for $28.50 and I think I paid probably about half that $14-ish for it or maybe less I don't remember here is a vacuum nozzle attachment for pet vacuuming which I clearly need I need something like 10 times the size to just like vacuum myself three times a day because my friend Sophia over there uh, you probably can't see her because she blends into our bed but she sheds a lot and this is just I just bought the attachment um, I think at the bins here is another dairy item this is a what a share thing four shares of Cornish Creamery Co from 1917 I like how the 1800s are crossed out it's nice nice touch just a pen from Jordan Marsh which is a department store that is no more as of I don't know a couple decades ago but it was like kind of a you know the way people are about their department stores <laughs> and this sold for a really low offer I forget but it's in really bad shape so that's fine <laughs> I think I just again just like I just grab advertising pens and pencils at estate sales and it's like one of those throw it in your bag and it doesn't really cost much of anything kind of things I mean sure it costs something but this <laughs> some really old software that actually belonged to me at some point in like the 90s uh, I decided it's probably time to like get rid of some of that stuff because I don't have a computer that even can take CDs let alone use the software <laughs> so it actually old software sells pretty well you'd be surprised this is a this is probably my favorite lot from the week um, this is a lot of 150 plus letters um, from in the Hughes family a lot of these or most of them were written by this person Octavia Hughes who was a woman who went to Europe right after World War II to work for the State Department US State Department and so these letters are her writing home about her adventures in Europe and what post-war Europe was like they're pretty interesting and then there's other ones to other people in the family but these are mostly from her back to her different relatives um, and mostly to like someone who must be her favorite aunt and are pretty cool they talk about fashion and stuff which is very interesting and um, yeah they have like really fun stamps and they're like these nice airmail envelopes and it's a really great lot I didn't read every one but I enjoyed what I did look through uh, this is just a little magnet I got off someone's fridge in an estate sale it's, it's a brand Rockcliffe pewter um, it's vintage it's a collie that's probably what sold it I had it on sale <laughs> more makeup this is from a local thrift store got it for three dollars sold for twenty four fifty immediately this is actually I believe discontinued here's a postcard from 1927 inviting people to a science club at the local museum here in Salem somebody bought this from I forget I th like it's Singapore or somewhere all the way across the world which I thought was kind of cool I, and I, I wonder why they wanted it and I I don't know they didn't tell me but it's kind of a cool little piece of ephemera again also half price sale a lot of the stuff I've had for a long time that I've sold half price Here's a really nice postcard. Um, this is a real photo postcard. It is um, dated 1913 in the caption here that somebody wrote on it. And it's a hotel in Florida. And there's great cars and it's a great street scene. Um, let's see, it's a real photo postcard. And this is from a collection of postcards that I bought in an album that are all this one person's travels through the east of the United States and there's like every hotel he went to he bought a postcard and wrote a note on it as to when he stayed there and sometimes 
where he drove from and how long it took. Like his like an early sort of motoring road trip is really cool. Um, and I got this whole album of 75 to 100 of these postcards at a flea market, believe it or not, for $10 maybe. It was under 20 definitely. And I was really surprised and happy when I came home and saw how extremely cool the postcards are. They're not all real photos. A lot are. And a lot are just early sort of 19... 02 to 1910 illustrated ones, but they're all really cool and they're annotated. <laughs> Here is a box of pen nibs and they're, you know, steel pen nibs you put in the holder. And I got these recently actually, and, and a lot from a multi-dealer antique slash stuff <laughs> store. I paid $15 for the lot and believe there were about 12 items in there that I turned into separate listings so I paid you know under two dollars for this and there's a lot of other cool stuff that is on sale now. <laughs> Here are some glasses I've had forever. I have no idea where I got these but they finally sold and they are sold as frames. They are pres actually prescription lenses in here. These sold on sale 21% off. Here are two buttons. God, they look so dirty when you look that closely. <laughs> um, these are celluloid wafer buttons. They're super thin and celluloid is an early plastic. Obviously they have cool geometric shapes. Um, and these have applied shanks on the back. And they're just nice, colorful buttons. I wish I'd taken a nicer picture and cleaned them a little, but they still sold for full price, so that's okay. <laughs> These are some, obviously, Starbucks um, cold cups. And these, for I didn't know this, but they apparently did special uh, editions for different universities. So these are Northeastern. And I got these at a thrift, like a church thrift store for a dollar. Again, fairly recently, they sold really fast. I was kind of surprised about that because there were others that were sort of sitting online. So I priced aggressively. <laughs> Here is a program from the Brooklyn Opera House from 1907. And I think it's, it's really beautiful. And so like, it's just so characteristic of the era. And, her super exaggerated swan shaped figure with the corsetry and the very like Art Nouveau flowing ephemeral or ethereal we'll say this is ephemeral that is ethereal and her Gibson girl hair and everything and it's also cool because it has really cool ads in it that are also extremely indicative of the time. And this is, again, something I've had for a long time. It's not on sale, but I got an offer. Here is, well, speaking of early early 20th century, this is a little Art Deco picture frame, probably from the 40s. Oh, I wrote 30s. It's probably from the 30s. <laughs> um, that's branded with this, you know, the photo studio name in a certain town. And it has these kind of cute pictures of these people who are anonymous to us and it, it stands up and this sold. I took an offer for like $12 or something. Here is a promo photo of Alan Holdsworth, a jazz guitarist. And this I have had for a really long time. I don't know where I got it and it finally sold. Here we have a religious medal. This is a nice one with this, um, cloisonne or resin or whatever it is blue stuff it's i think it's a really pretty color <laughs> but it's very tiny as you can see three quarters of an inch including the bail i think and something that's very easy to sell and ship and with some more buttons these are clear glass and i think this one here is kind of a star of the show the twine wrapping and these sold for like ten dollars, nine, nine, ten dollars, I think. They are something again I've had for a long time. 
here we have an empty bottle of Mercurochrome. I don't know if you remember this from your childhood, you know, being outside playing and cutting yourself and having your parent douse you in this weird staining orange liquid. Oh, here's a bottle from some. And I just picked this up at an estate sale for, you know, in a big uh, batch of stuff for very little. And this sold pretty quickly. I was surprised, actually. It only took a couple weeks. We have, oh, this is pretty spectacular. This might be my other favorite thing this week. Um, this is an Audubon hand-colored squirrel. <laughs> Marmot. Yeah, this is a really, really nice print. Um, it came from the a, a known um, early printing of Audubon's animal illustrations. It's from the Octavo first edition and it's hand painted and it's just it's so nice. I well, you know, I really like squirrels, even though these look like chipmunks to me. Apparently they're mermaid squirrels. Yeah, these are great. I got at an estate sale again, another estate sale. Um I just bought a ton of ephemera and amongst it were quite a few of these early first edition first of this specific edition Audubon hand colored lithographs in there. They're awesome. The most most of the ones I have are birds, but I have a few animals and I think this is one of my favorites. Well my favorite is probably the um groundhogs which I have framed on the wall. <laughs> yeah, really I'm kind of fond of rodents. Alright, moving on. Oh this is three lots that one person bought. So this is just a photo of a house in Salem in 1946. And as you can see, it is very strange architecturally. It is actually extremely cool, really weird. And I got this at an estate sale that was actually in this house, which was so fun to go explore. So there's this one. And then they also bought this lot of photos from that house, which this there's like people who live there and this is if you watched my photos video like a few days ago this is a nice occupational photo um so this is the house and this is from the interior this is that fan shaped stained glass window and very dramatic shape uh, space with the chandeliers and um it's a terrible photo here's the exterior again and here it is in the snow and here's that window again and Here's some people who lived there, and here's some people who lived there long ago with their car, and so on and so forth. So you can see there's a lot to like about these photos. There's cars and animals and cool architecture, but the person who bought these told me that he used to live in this neighborhood, so that would probably be the reason for his interest and then he also bought this lot which is not of that house but is super cool this, this group of uh eight by ten photos from 1939 of the electric light electric plant um in salem they are captioned which is great i don't know why they were taken i'm sure it was for some sort of you know civil engineering purpose but the cars are awesome and they're just really interesting so we have and you know this this edifice does not really stand in the same configuration today i think that part of it is still up i'm not sure this really kind of cool photos and they're big and they're they're really clear like they're journalistic high quality photos so this is the lot i mean it's an electric plant in the 30s. It's interesting, right? And so I sold on an offer of $50, I believe, along with those two other lots. And then <laughs> here we have a timely bit of ephemera. This is something from the RNC from 1928. It's an anti-immigration pamphlet that is shockingly not dissimilar from some stuff you might hear in the current platforms. 
and this sold for sixteen fifty. I don't know where I got it, you know, ephemera. <laughs> it just appears in my life. Um, here are some Chinese Kino tickets, um, probably from the turn of the century. I bought these at Brimfield um, Antique Fair a couple seasons ago, a lot with, along with a lot of other ephemera, mostly um, labels, sort of new old stock product labels and stuff from this guy who had this cool ephemera booth. And he told me what these were and I thought they looked cool so I bought them and they took at least a year to sell for $14.50 but that's fine. I mean they didn't comp out very well in the end anyway. Next we have this cool kit and this sold within hours of being listed last night. It's um it's got a I probably could have listed it higher to be honest but you know who knows um it's vintage it's undone it has all the components to do it to to stitch it and it's super cottage core it's got like mushrooms and spider webs mushrooms are really hot right now <laughs> as an like aesthetic thing um and you know people love these vintage bucilla bucilla kits um, not just cool, but needlepoint and stuff. And these, so here's the printed um, patterns on the linen cloth, and it had the yarn, and it has some embroidery floss to do the spider webs with, and then it has these little glass beads to do like the dew on the spider webs. And it has the instructions, so it's pretty complete. It even has these wooden frames to frame your work with little nails to nail it in. So. Except for the back of this box, it was surprisingly complete and it was from an estate sale that I went to like last week, I think, and the person who lived there was a prolific needle worker and most of, sorry, my cats are having a fight um, on the floor. It's not a mean fight, it's just a brotherly spat, they're fine. Um, hey kids and um so this kid I found in the in the attic was not actually finished and I was pretty excited to find it so that sold like instantaneously um as did this from yet another estate sale I've been busy this is obviously inkjet ink and it's probably expired I couldn't find the date but I would guess it is and this sold instantly again. I mean, if it works, it's a really good deal to get all this ink for $40. This is like an expensive kind. So hopefully it will work. And if it doesn't, then I have free returns. Oh, and in terms of what I paid again, I bought a huge lot of stuff for $75 maybe. So, and this wasn't even all the ink that I got. And some of the, I got like a Blendtec blender and some really good kitchen stuff. And so very little into this. Last item, oh, is a Fire TV stick 4K. And this is, I think, two generations old. It's from 2021, I think, if I recall correctly, but it is new open box. And I got this at a consignment slash antique place in my hood. <laughs> I actually paid 10 or $15 for this, I believe, but it sold again instantly, like within hours for $34.99. So plus shipping. So that's totally worth it. And you'll notice that I have had more health and beauty and electronics in with all my bits of paper. And that is definitely part of my plan going forward this year which again, like I said, I will talk about more in upcoming videos. And I'm interested to hear what you think about that. Don't worry, I will still talk about really stodgy, boring paper topics if you want me to, because I still love that stuff. But we need to make the money <laughs> as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been 
what sold this week. Bye.